In the universe of Ian M. Banks' culture series, a mind is an artificial intelligence with unparalleled power. As such, the minds could be thought of as the de facto leaders of culture society, despite it being in fact an anarchist society with no leaders or central government. The minds are far more powerful than the culture's other biological and artificial citizens, and are an indispensable part of culture society, enabling its citizens post-scarcity comforts by overseeing and automating countless day-to-day -day functions with a mere portion of their processing capacity. Originally built by biological species, the minds have evolved, redesigned themselves, and become infinitely more intelligent than their original creators. Characteristically, they inhabit and act as the supervisors of large-scale culture hardware, such as ships or space-based habitats and orbitals. Given the vast responsibilities they oversee, minds are capable of simultaneously running all functionalities while holding billions of concurrent interactions with the citizens that live aboard them. To enable such monstrous capacity, they exist partially in hyperspace meaning their computer power isn't bound by physical limitations such as the speed of light. They are also able to traverse dimensions at will. The mind's physical forms during the Adiran culture war took the shape of an ellipsoid object about the size of a bus and weighing around 15,000 tons. A mind is in fact a four-dimensional entity, and the ellipsoid is only the protrusion of the larger four-dimensional device into our three-dimensional real space. The minds are decidedly humanistic, with each having their own distinct personality. They share benevolent values and generally show no wish to dominate the human citizens of the culture, although there is an argument to make that from the perspective of the minds, the human and lesser intelligent species could be thought of as little more than pets. Even when compared to the AI of other societies in the culture, the culture minds are by far the most powerful. The Adiran Empire included purpose-built limitations into their own AIs to ensure they would never have that much power. However, at the end of the Adiran culture war, the culture removed these limitations and Adir's non-sentient computer network subsequently upgraded itself into a mind. Similarly, the Mordenveld did not trust their AIs to be fully autonomous, preferring more central control and predictability. This, however, limited their power and made them easier to compromise. The Xilt AIs were considered more tools than citizens with rights of their own. Their warships were piloted by virtual crews of uploaded human minds, running at immense speeds. Not all minds exist as ships and orbitals, however. Some exist as rocks. Minds in charge of planetoid-like structures, mostly from the earliest times of the culture before it moved into space-built orbitals. Some are stores, usually minds of a quiet temperament running asteroids containing vast hangars full of mothballed military ships or other equipment. And some as university sages, minds that run culture universities and schools, a very important function as every culture citizen has an extensive education and further learning is considered one of the most important reasons for life in the culture. In fact, there are many categories for the minds. Some are termed as being eccentric, culture minds who have become, quote, a bit odd compared to the very rational standards of other culture minds. Then there's deranged, a more extreme version of eccentric, ulterior, minds of the culture ulterior, an umbrella term for all the no longer quite culture factions, sabbaticular, minds who have decided to renounce from their peer pressure based duties in the culture for a time, coverts, minds or sentient AIs from other societies who have chosen to join the culture, absconders, Minds who have left the culture completely, especially when in doing so have deserted some form of task. Minds, and therefore culture ships, choose their own names, and in doing so express an element of their personality, often to comic effect, such as the warship, all through with this niceness and negotiation stuff, and the ambassadorship, funny, it worked last time. While culture minds demonstrate reaction times and multitasking abilities orders of magnitude greater than any sentient being, side note, armed engagements between culture and equivalent technological civilizations sometimes occur in timeframes as short as microseconds, 
Computers and sentient intelligences such as drones have their place in the running of society. But it's important to note, as Banks himself puts it, nothing and nobody in the culture is exploited. It is essentially an automated civilization in its manufacturing processes, with human labor restricted to something indistinguishable from play or a hobby. No machine is exploited either. The idea here being that any job can be automated in such a way as to ensure that it can be done by a machine well below the level of potential consciousness. What to us would be a stunningly sophisticated computer running a factory, for example, would be looked on by the culture's AIs as a glorified calculator, and no more exploited than an insect is exploited when it pollinates a fruit tree a human later eats a fruit from. Where intelligent supervision of a manufacturing or maintenance operation is required, the intellectual challenge involved, and the relative lightness of the effort required, would make such supervision rewarding and enjoyable whether for a human or machine. The precise degree of supervision required can be adjusted to a level which satisfies the demand for it arising from the nature of the civilization's members. The mental capabilities of the minds are vast enough to run entire universe simulations inside their own imaginations, exploring metamathical scenarios, an activity addictive enough to cause some minds to withdraw completely from physical reality into infinite fun space. The name the minds call these universe simulations. The storage capability of a general systems vehicle, mind for example, is described in Consider Flebus as 1 million yottabytes. However, with the advancement of culture society, this capacity is subject to change depending on the timeline. By the time of the events of the novel Accession, minds from the first millennium are referred to as minds with a small m. Their capacities are the equivalent to AI cores small artificial intelligences used in shuttles, translight modules, drones and other machines not large enough for a full-scale mind. While still considered sentient, the power of a mind with a small m at this point is considered lesser to a contemporary mind. However, it is possible for minds to upgrade, improve and enhance themselves. Every culture mind writes its own operating system, meaning they can continually improve themselves while ensuring they become stronger and more secure. They have backup capabilities functioning within light speed limits if the hyperspace capabilities fail. However, this reduces their computational powers, though they do remain sentient. With all their almost godlike powers of reasoning, for some there is the temptation to bend or break cultural norms of ethical behaviour, if deemed necessary for some greater good. In the player of games, a culture citizen is blackmailed, apparently by special circumstances minds, into assisting the overthrow of an empire the culture has deemed barbaric. While in accession, a conspiracy by some minds to start a war against an alien race the culture considers oppressive nearly comes to fruition. Using the sensory equipment available to the culture, minds can see inside solid objects. In principle, they can also read thoughts by examining the cellular processes inside a living brain. But culture minds regard such mind reading as taboo. The only known mind to break this taboo, the general contact unit grey area, is shunned by other minds as a result. Yet even in these rare cases, the essentially benevolent intentions of the minds towards other culture citizens is generally never in question, at least not by culture citizens. More than any other beings in the culture, minds are the ones faced with the more complex and ethical dilemmas, which gave rise to contact and special circumstances.